here. I'm 26 years old. My wife and I wake up at 6.30 a.m. And we've got to get two little girls ready and out of the door by 7.50. Uh, I, I, I can relate. I am running my multi-million dollar business from 8 a.m. to 5.30, and I rarely take lunch. I am the hardest worker uh, I know, and I can literally feel my potential to be the baddest MF in all aspects of my life. Damn right. My problem is when I get home, it's time with my family until my girl's bedtime at 8 p.m. Uh, after I put them to bed, it's time to clean the house. Dishes usually done by 9. When I get finished by 9, I'm mentally done. All I can think in my head is you've busted your ass all day doing things that you really don't want to do, and now it's your time to relax and enjoy yourself. My wife and I relax by watching two hours or so of Netflix and go to bed. I find it extremely hard to make myself read, work out, or do anything productive after the kids go to bed. My question is, how do I break this mental block, or how do I take time for these things? I really don't have to say it. I really feel like a bitch because I know I'm making excuses. Jonathan, that's not what I'm thinking. Uh, uh, Christian, that's not what I'm thinking. I'm not thinking that you're a bitch at all. I'm thinking you are on the, uh, you're on the horse, bro. You are on that wild stallion right now, age 26 with two little girls. That was me. Uh, waking up at 6.30. Well, I was waking up at 5.30. Had you beat. <laughs> but you were getting your kids off to school. My wife was doing all that, you know. Um, and I was running my business from... 5.30 a.m. because that's when the first strength camp would happen. And the last one would be done at uh, the last class would be done at like 8 o'clock at night. So, uh, you know, you're even spending a little bit more time at home with your family than I did. Um, I would get a break in the middle of the day and the gym wasn't too far from my house. So uh, I would go home and I would actually have lunch with my children, with my two girls at the time. And then I'd head, I'd head right back out to the gym. I'd probably I'd have lunch and I'd take a nap and then I'd go back to the gym. So it kind of balances itself out. Um, and so the first thing I want to say is you're doing an incredible job. You're doing exactly what you need to be doing at the stages you are in your life. You're not wasting your 20s. Like most guys, 26 years old, they're not even close to you, man. You're, you're nailing it. You're killing it. You're, you're doing great. I'm proud of you. You should be proud of yourself. Running your multi-million dollar business, taking care of your girls, taking care of your wife. You're doing amazing things. You even help clean up and wash dishes and shit. You're better than me. <laughs> You're a better man than me. Um, the problem is, I understand that you are not able to squeeze your workouts in. You say you want to be able to read, you want to work out, you want to do other productive things. Uh, what I would like to remind you of is this. First, I'll say this, and then I'll give you maybe some tips that might help you. But ultimately, you got to recognize that life is in seasons, bro. Life is in seasons, and there are seasons of sowing, you know, busting your ass, sacrificing. When you said that you spend your day doing things you really don't want to do, and now it's your time to relax, well, you, you're, you're doing the right thing by doing all the things you really don't want to do during this time in your life, because this is when you're, you're, you're sowing, man. You're breaking your face. You, you, you can sacrifice yourself. This is something that's a, a very warrior quality not all men have it in them to be able to do this but we can self-sacrifice a man with a strong warrior it will allows himself to be sacrificed it allows himself to be killed shred me up tear me up squeeze me dry i'm giving everything i'm i will die and that's the kind of attitude that you have and it's going to pay off it's paying off god bless you and your family um, and in that sacrificial state, sometimes things got to be set aside. You might not be able to spend all your time or a lot of time reading. I understand that. Uh, you're mentally drained at the end of the day. Don't beat yourself up. I'll give you some tips though in a moment. Same thing with working out. I understand, you know, you're up at, you're up at 630, uh, and you know, you're, you're home, you, you, by the time you get home, you're tired. Here are a few things that I would, I would I'd put out there to you um, because they're what I do. You and I seem to be in very similar situations, very uh, tight schedules, a lot of responsibility, um, and not 
you know, energy is limited, right? You don't have all, you know, you're not you, unlimited energy. I'm not making any judgments. I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm telling you what I do. Um, first thing that I recognize, and again, like you, you got to live your life. You got to do it the way you, you, you need to do it. Um, just some insight, some feedback, because uh, obviously you're open to feedback. You say that you get done with dishes about nine o'clock. You're done cleaning the house nine o'clock, and then you stay up for another two hours watching Netflix nine, 10, 11. So you're up till 11 o'clock at night. You get home at 5.30. So from 5.30, 6.30, 7.30, 8.30, 9.30, 10.30, 11.30, right, say 11, uh, 11, 11.30, you're five, you got five and a half, you got five and a half hours that you're not at the office. You have five and a half hours with your home, at home. I know that you're spending some time with your girls and they go to bed at eight uh, and then you got another two hours. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of time. And then two of those hours, you're watching Netflix. Now, I don't know what you're watching on Netflix. I don't watch anything. <laughs> I, and again, this is not a judgment. This is when I have that free time, instead of, especially with my wife, the best, when you're with your wife watching Netflix, that's time that you're together, I assume, right? You're Netflixing and chilling. Um, Neither my wife or I like watching anything. And so our time together in that regard, a lot of times is sitting, we have a couch in the kitchen, sitting there. And that's when we read. That's when Colleen will be reading something. That's when I'll be reading something, right? So our time together a lot of times is quiet time because that's what loving couples do. We don't always have to be chatting and talking and you know busying ourselves with each other, but we could be next to each other and Colleen likes to, Colleen is more into entertainment than I am. So she's reading like dumb books or she's scrolling. Um, <laughs> uh, when I say dumb books, they're just like stories. Yeah, fucking stories. I read stories. Um, that's when I'm reading right now. I'm uh, reviewing my Baltimore Catechism. I'm reading, rereading that. Taking notes now. Uh, I'm reading my spiritual books. That's usually what I read. I'm reading spiritual books. There's a lot of books that, uh, new books that I've been really fascinated with that I'll share with you guys later on could add to my, my reading list. But that's when I do my reading. And then, but check it out. Eight, nine, right? So you're, you're, you're doing more chores at nine. I'm trying to fit your life into mine. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just telling you. Uh, you're not going to bed. So you're not done doing stuff till after your kids are in bed and then you're going to sleep all the way at, at, at 11 o'clock at night. So you have to wake up at 6.30. When you're waking up at 6.30, uh, again, I'm just telling you me, I keep apologizing, but I'm looking at your schedule. I'm seeing where you can maybe make some things around. When you're waking up at 6.30, I had already, I work out at five. I get up at 4.50, right? Maybe you could do that. Maybe you can't, but guess what? I'm in bed by 8.30. You know what? I put my kids to bed and then I go to bed, 8.30. I don't stay up past that. When, after we eat dinner, like around six, seven, eight, that's when I'm, that's when I'm reading. I'm not telling you that you need to, 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 uh, to change your whole lifestyle. This is something that my wife and I do sometimes. Sometimes I have to, sometimes I have to like change things up and I got to tell her to, I'm like, babe, I got to change things up. I need, I got to get back in my workouts. I got to do what I got to do. Uh, and so, you know, sometimes she's, she's always, she's always understanding, but it's like, well, I'm going to spend less time with you or. I'm not going to get up when you get up, you know, just because my wife gets up at seven. She gets up at 645. I'm up. I've been already been up for almost two hours by then. <laughs> right. It's nice to get up together. But at the same time. I set the pace. I set the pace. She don't set the pace. And so I get up first. I, you know, there was a long time. Where I would. Forever, I would get up before my wife. Forever, I would get up before my wife. And then there came a time, actually, it was like when COVID hit. It was, came a time earlier this year where I started sleeping in, and she would get up before me. And I, my ego just couldn't handle it. <laughs> I just couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle the fact that my, I'm in bed and she's up before me. And so I started catching myself, and I started recognizing that. And like I started treating it like a game. 
right? Because I was still sleeping in late when COVID hit and the kids didn't have to go to school anymore. Our whole lives just took a, like everybody, whole lives just took a little turn up. And uh, I would make sure that if she started stirring, like to get out of bed, I would hop up, put my feet on the ground. And as, as long as my feet hit the ground before hers, I was like, good. <laughs> I ain't letting this happen. And she ain't getting up before me. I think that's really important for men. I think that, you know, I, it's, it's just me. I'm just making shit up. I'm just telling you what I do. Christian, it's just my feedback. Uh, you got to get up before your woman. Don't get up the same time as your wife. You got to get up before your wife. Women need their beauty sleep. Uh, I heard somebody even describe it today as that, uh, that moment of, tr the, I don't remember how he described it. I was listening to a video, but he was saying, when your alarm clock goes off in the morning, that's your moment of triumph. That's going to set the pace for the rest of the day. And I, and I agree with him fully because my alarm, it goes off. I set, first of all, I, I put my, I put it on my phone and I set it across the room. So my bed's over there. This is over here. When my alarm clock goes off, I can't roll over and turn it off. I got to get out of my bed. I got to walk over to it. I got to turn it off. And then I got to make a decision. <laughs> do I pull up the sheets and put my pillow back or do I sneak back into the bed? Right? And that's the moment of triumph. That's the moment of triumph. You got to get up and stay up. And that's my advice. My, my advice would be to begin making this, these adjustments by getting up earlier. And then by nature, you're going to want to go to bed earlier. I don't see any value in staying up two hours watching Netflix. I see value in spending time next to your wife, quiet time with your wife. Um, but in that time that you're together, make it productive. Again, I just, it's just my, my personality. I'm not into watching TV, Netflix, or anything like that. Um, it's not that I don't watch anything. I'll, I'll, I'll find YouTube videos that I listen to when I walk. I listen to a lot of sermons, listen to the census fidelium, listen to uh, Derek Prince. There's a lot of guys like on YouTube I like listening to. Um, but it's always while I'm doing something else. I'm either driving, I'm taking my walk, I'm working out. That's when I'm listening to that stuff. Never do I, can I, very rarely do I sit down and that's what I'm doing. I'm just watching something. It's just me. So that's one way you can get your workout in. One way to get your workout in is get up an hour earlier. Your, your wife is up at 6.30, you get up at 5.30. Five o'clock. Right? I don't know if you have a gym in your house or a gym nearby. Even if it's this, it's not even, check this out. Here's a little tip. It's not even the fact that you have to get up and do the thing that you need to do, which is to work out, because that might, there's a lot of resistance there. The getting up and then I got to go to the gym. Get up and, and, and first establish the, process, the, the, uh, the practice of getting up earlier. Make that number one. Get up earlier and then fill that time with something seamless. Like if you're not used to getting up early and then tomorrow you decide, well, I'm going to get up an hour and a half earlier and I'm going to go work out. You're going to, it's the, you're diluting yourself and you're going to, it's going to be self-defeating because I've done that to myself before. If I want to establish a new habit, I first establish the time and I fill that with something soft. So right now I told you I wake up. It's just been the past week, a little over a week. I've been getting up at 6.50 and training at 5. And I love it. I'm like, wow, why wasn't I doing this before? But you know, I had to build up to that because I was getting up at 5 o'clock for the past month and a half. I was meditating, right? And then I was, which was totally passive. I get up and I meditate, right? I was telling you guys, I, would use, I, I listened to Holosync for a little while just to get that, just to establish the pattern of getting up and having that space. It's about creating that space. Once I establish that space, then I dropped the hold of sink. I'd still get up. And then I started doing my rosary, which is a little bit more active. Now I'm praying, right? Now I get up and because I'm so used to being up and my body's already waking up, I'm feeling fresh in that moment. I get up and now I'm in my gym. I'm downstairs. I'm pumping fucking iron. I'm pumping iron. I still do the rosary. I listen to the rosary while I, while I, while I warm up, while I stretch. I'm still praying. I'm praying. So I'm praying and I'm working out. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, uh, and then at 6.30, while you're getting out of bed, I had already worked out, changed my clothes, I hop in my car, and I go to Mass. I go to Mass every morning. 
by the time I get home, 8 a.m., I would have prayed, worked out, went and went, and went to mass. And most people are just scratching their ass. And I'm not bragging. I'm just saying what's possible. What's possible by getting up earlier. You can get so much more done getting up, going to, going to bed. Get up earlier first, and then you're just going to naturally want to go to bed early. And you have an excuse to go to bed. Because if you start like saying, oh, I'm going to start going to bed early, right? And you wake up at the same time. Oh, I'm going to start going to bed early. Your wife is going to look at you like, why? What's wrong with you, right? There's no reason. But if you start getting up early, first of all, this is what, it, am I gonna, the woman needs to know that you're doing more always. And she needs to feel like, <laughs> this is just, this is, maybe it's just me. This is my alpha way of thinking, right? It's my dad. Uh, she needs, she just needs to know you getting up earlier than her. She needs to know you're putting in, you're putting in time, you're putting in hours. And, you're, and while she's still drooling on the pillow, you're up. It doesn't even matter what you're doing, but the mere fact that you're not in the bed next to her snoozing, she will recognize that when you start getting dozy while she's watching bullshit on Netflix, there's a reason why. This man was up. This man was up early. This man was doing something while I was still snoozing. All right, maybe, that, maybe she will think that consciously or not. Most of the time, women are not conscious of these things. Um, or maybe it won't make a difference at all. Maybe she'll even shit test you about it. I don't know. I don't know your relationship. I pray that you, and I imagine that you, you have a great relationship with your wife, uh, two little girls, 26. You know, all I can see is great things for you unfolding in the future. But that's what I would do. Whether it be you get up and start reading, right? Because you say there was the two things that you want. You want to work out, you want to read. I would say the best, the easiest thing, not the best thing, but the easiest thing to do is get up a little earlier and that's when you establish your reading time because it's very easy to get up and pour a cup of coffee. If you're into that, pour your cup of coffee, sit on the couch and start reading, right? Right? It's good to do spiritual reading early, first thing in the morning, set your pace, right? You know, do some spiritual reading, religious reading, thinking about God first thing in the morning. But that would be, that would be the first thing to do. And I guarantee you everything else is going to fall in place for you. Get up earlier, go to bed earlier. Fill that time first, fill that time when you first get up with something easy, reading, and then from reading, walking, right? And then so you can listen to audio books while you're walking. Check this out. This is how I start combining shit. You get up in the morning and first you start reading because it's easy and you're still half asleep. Then when you start getting used to that, you get up, you lace up your shoes, you get outside and now it's like the weather's getting chilly. You live in uh, Georgia, nice crisp air. Go for a walk, listen to your book now. You can continue doing that. You can do that forever. That's my go -to. That's one of my solid go-tos. Now that I have a dog, I walk a little bit later. I don't do that first thing in the morning anymore. Um, but that's a solid go-to for me for many, many years. Get up first thing in the morning, strap on those shoes, put on your plugs and start listening. You get up and you start doing that. If you want to start working, which is a workout, think about it. you walking, work, don't underestimate the power of walking fellas. <laughs> Walk, especially, you know, you, I don't know, you know, you say you live in, it looks like you live in Savannah. I'm just looking at your, uh, your bio here. Um, I don't know how many hills there are, but you know, walking, 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 walking hills, that's a tough workout, man. Walking fast, it's a tough work. It's a good workout. It's a good work. It's, it's well worth doing. So maybe you just get up and you start walking and you listen to audiobooks. And if you want to get your workout in, here's something that I was thinking about. You uh if you if you run in the business, you own your business. Maybe you could find a time in the middle of the day. It's always good to take a break, man. It's always, no matter how hard you're working, it's always good to take a, a break in the middle of the day because it's going to energize you. You take a break in the middle of the day, it's going to energize you. Say, you, you know, uh, on your lunch break, you do a half hour workout, right? Do a half hour workout, get a kettlebell, do some body weight, go to a local gym, whatever it is, pump out a quick workout, have your lunch, and then go about the rest of your day. You could have two workouts in every day. You could walk first thing in the morning and then do a quick uh, high-intensity training workout at lunchtime, 30 minutes. 
bust it out, bust it up for 30 minutes, have your lunch. That's what you're actually lunch hour. So you can do this, man. I know you can do this. And once again, I'm not bragging. I'm not comparing myself to you. The reason why I can offer so much to you guys, is because I see myself in you, I see myself in you, you and me and I, and you, you know, we, I can relate to you guys. Uh, when I, when I had my two daughters and I was running, building strength camp, I was probably about 26, 27 years old. I was also, that's when I started, that's when I was really competing hardcore and strong, man. So I was doing my workouts. I was eating my meals, having my protein shakes, doing my workouts, building strength camp. And I started making YouTube videos. So you can do it. I think you can do it. I think you can do it. Bottom line, the, the bottom line is just get up earlier. Start getting up. There's a good book. Uh, it may not all relate to you. It's called Early to Rise by Craig Ballantyne. Um, his advice is start getting up 15 minutes earlier. And that's not bad advice, right? Because I tell you, get up an hour earlier. Maybe that's, not, maybe that's not possible for you right away. But get up earlier. And damn sure, never let another day go by in your life where your wife gets up before you. That's bad news. <laughs> Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot Hulse here, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation coaching students where among many things we get together about four or five hours a week where we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives in fitness business and with women and if you want to join a like-minded group of men that get together every day to grow stronger in every way during this degenerate age it's real simple just follow me on instagram and then dm me the word king k-i-n-g and then me or one of my teammates will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I really hope to see you perhaps at our next live call. Done.